I thought it was great though. They put it together very well. Um, I know you said you watched it as well, so I wanted to get your thoughts on how you felt uh, and be, just being able to see Ric Flair, uh, uh, the, the nitty gritty on Ric Flair. I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, this is this is a, a amazing story, um, and I mean, it, it talks about, you know, it highlights, of course, his success, you know, as a as a uh, as a wrestler, um, as an athlete. Um, but then also, I, I thought it was great that it also highlighted like the tragedies that he dealt with in his life, and it also how that success led to like a lot of failures as well. I mean, you look at, you know, and and, and, and again, when you watch this, like you have to keep an open mind. Some people will put, will will attempt to like politicize this this film or whatever, but I mean, I think it's I think it uh, it captures uh, the struggles that a lot of people deal with of this period, especially with fame. Like, when you become famous and you get money and, you know, and stuff like that, like, I think your your personality or your character, the, the, the character that you want to, that you want to put out there starts to come out. And I think that's what I think with Flair, right? Like, a person who, you know, again, this is a kid who was adopted. I mean, I didn't know that, right? He was an adopted child. Uh, you know, and I mean, that kind of starts the, the ball rolling from the game. Like, an adopted child and he never had any connections with his real parents or his adopted family who were like, you know, uh, well off for the most part, a uh, doctor and one, I think one was a doctor and another one was like a, uh, um, I can't remember what the, what the other parent was. A school teacher or a lawyer or something like that. I mean, they, they had yeah, money. Yeah. So, you know, that was pretty prestigious and, you know, he never connected with them. Right. So this is a guy who never really had any connection with anybody and so you could already see that because of that, people who don't have connections with like their parents or like with their family, they look for attention elsewhere. And this was the ultimate <laughs> attention seeker, man. Yes. This dude loved attention, you know. And so, uh, and so, man, it was just crazy. Like, you know, uh, I thought what, what caught me was just, you know, his openness about his affairs on his wife, on his first wife, and just like, you know, how, you know, how he just like. You know how he just yearned for the attention. He enjoyed the attention, and it became like who he was. Even his persona in the ring, you know, that became who he was. And so uh, it almost overshadowed, you know, his actual life. You know, outside the ring, the wrestling took over his life. You know, and so it, it, it was it was real interesting, man. It was it was a great. I thought it was a great documentary. Um, I'm gonna have to watch it again, man. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, I, I just. One of the I don't mean to cut you off, but one of the biggest thing I've seen is, you know, we growing up watching wrestling, which a lot of us have, uh, uh, we we realized and figured out that it was fake, it was acting, and it was two two things I kind of got from that is that he said it, it, that it's not acting, it's choreographed, which I, I I haven't heard it said that way, but it's it's acting. But I think another thing of what he said also was, you know, Shawn Michaels actually said. His real name was Fleer, Rick Fleer, but he didn't even, he didn't want to get to know who his actual self was. He lived Rick Flair day in and day out. And I think he still lives Rick Flair. I don't think he even knows who he is. And yeah. uh, uh, the other part was that they were saying he, Rick Fleer doesn't pay his taxes. Rick Fleer uh, doesn't, can't stay married to anybody. Rick Fleer is a totally different person from Ric Flair, the one that we know uh, and a lot of people cherish and, and talk about. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and I, I, I think when you for, for him, and, and I think a lot of celebrities, man, when when you play those roles and you get into those characters, sometimes you get lost in the character, you know. And we, and we've always said that those those individuals that get lost lost in their character usually are some of the greatest actors. You know, you look at uh. Sure. Um, Keith Ledger, you know, who who played the you know, who played the Joker, that to me like that was by far the best Joker I've ever seen in a Batman film. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but you know, but who who would have known that he was really having, you know, uh mental struggles, right? <laughs> and he carried that he he played this character to a T. You know, you look at Ric Flair, I mean he personified that you know, that, you know, called himself the nature boy, you know, but that, like, flair and, like, that flash and that, you know, that glamour and, you know, 
Like he he personified that man. When I saw him walk in the ring, man, it was just like it was a show, you know. <laughs> and as a kid, you know, I, like I, I mean, I, I I wasn't necessarily I wasn't necessarily the uh, the, the the most like you know like I, I didn't love Ric Flair uh, as a wrestler. I mean, I think Sting for me, I, I was a big bigger Sting fan of the things like that. But Ric Flair really was like the show. You know what I'm saying? And even when you when Rick Flair was in the race, you wanted people to beat him. And he just like made it so hard to beat him. You know what I'm saying? And so you just enjoyed that. You gotta appreciate that player that he brought. So it was a great documentary. Um if you haven't seen it, man, you gotta check it out, man. It, it is hilarious. It was really good and that, that that plane crash, man, it's crazy how a plane crash can like literally save your career, right? And and that's what it did for him. It you know, did. that plane crash saved his career. You know? And, and that, that's that's another thing that I, I did not know. Some of the background stuff. I didn't know he was in a plane crash. I didn't know, you know, wrestling wasn't really something he wanted to do. It's something he he started to do at, at, at a point in time in his life when he started training. And the plane crash, yeah, the plane crash was something that completely revamped his life as a whole. Um, shout out to 334 Bama Boy. Also, Grego in the building. He says, I didn't love Flair either, but I wasn't a fan of WCW, only WWF, WWE. And for me, yeah. I was I was a I was a WWF guy. You know, Randy Savage, um, Hulk, of course. But when when Goldberg came out, that's when I, I kind of almost flip flopped. I went back and forth from WCW to WWF because Goldberg made WCW huge. Um, Ric Flair did too, but Goldberg was like that next level, uh, for sure. Well, uh, I want to say for me, I think it was uh, when the NWO and uh, yeah, and then the Four Horsemen, out. like when those when those two organizations like started in the W and the WCW. I think that's when I was like, do I want to watch WCW or WWF now? Right? right, right. <laughs> and I think I and, I and I think I I turned more to W. WCW, and I said, you know, like I said, for me, Sting was always one of my favorite wrestlers to watch. Um, and, and so that was, you know, I started watching WCW more, and that's when I really started paying attention to Ric Flair. And just, like I said, you know, his, his charisma, you know, um, that player, you know, the, the robes, man, the, with all the feathers, man, and all the just, you know, the gold and all that stuff. Man. He was dope. He was a dope wrestler. He, know, he was. He was. So everybody go check that out. Uh, another thing from this week, the Martellus Bennett saga. This uh, So the background of this story is that he gets cut by the Green Bay Packers. It says, with failure to disclose a medical condition Andrew. designation. That Okay, first of all, all those words, it's a bunch of like random words thrown together. He just didn't say the injury. Just like, no put all this gibberish but anyway so then he gets cut he goes to the he, he goes on waivers he gets claimed by the patriots so congratulations to all the patriots fans you got another weapon on your team uh, but then he says the packers already knew about the injury so now where what's the heart of this story i think is what the real question is what is the real heart of why the packers cut him um also he said he was going to retire at the end of this year and who the same week or the week after he gets cut. So I had to get your thoughts on that real quick before I let you go. I mean I mean this this is this is definitely one of those messy situations right now, man. Um you know, I, I was when 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 Green Bay signed Martellus Bennett at the end of the season, I was excited because I was like, this like Green Bay is gonna have that you know, weapon up the middle that they've been looking for for a while to kinda of open up the outside to the wild those receivers to eat more, you know what I'm saying, and and you know, and have the safety, you know, the safety blanket for for Aaron Rodgers, you know, and you know, seven weeks in, it hasn't really worked, um, and then you know they cut him and say this medical, you know, designation, you know, undisclosed or whatever, and in my head I'm like, dude, this is an organization that, you know, like they're training you every week. How did you guys not know that his shoulder was torn? Like mm -hmm. that just doesn't make any sense. And so, with that being said, I'm questioning 
as well, you know, and I, I think Benny came out and said, really, they cut me because of money. All right. It was like they didn't want to. Um, they thought that he was going to go on IR. And if he went on IR, they still would have to pay him um, his salary for this year. And, you know, they signed him for like a three year deal. So they would have to sign. They would have to pay him out um, those those extra years, especially if he retired. So they decided to cut him. And basically, it is like, yo, I never said I was going to go on IR. I never, like, I told you guys that I was thinking about retiring, but I never confirmed if I was retiring or not. But, like, y'all really cut me because of money. Like, don't try to say that. <laughs> you know, don't try to say I didn't disclose the information. Like, you knew that my shoulder was messed up. I've been playing all year when my shoulder messed up, and I've been telling you guys that something's wrong with my shoulder. But y'all didn't want me to have surgery, and I wasn't going to have surgery. You know, like, y'all y'all messed up. And, I, and I, I'm inclined to believe. You know, I'm really inclined to believe it because I just don't think that an organization um, who monitors your physical health, who's monitoring, you know, every week, uh, could miss that. I mean, how can you miss a guy playing with a torn labrum, you know, with a torn shoulder? There's no way that you miss that, you know. So I, I, I believe him. Uh, the Patriots took him up. I think he's going to. I think he said he's going to play the rest of the season. So we'll see how that works. Uh, you know, the Patriots have picked up. Uh, the other tight end from uh from uh from the Colts. Uh I can't think of his name right now. Um Oh, I know you told Dwayne Dwayne something. Dwayne Allen. Yeah. It picked up Dwayne Allen, who has zero catches to zero yards this year. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah. I Some, think something's I think not something not right with a tour. either. Yeah, so I don't know what happened with that. He just didn't work out. I thought that was gonna be nice for him when they picked him up. Um, it didn't work out. So I think they're going back to that, that double tight end set where Martellus Bennett, who played really well for them last year. So um, it'll be good to see him back on the field, um, make some moves. Uh, don't pick him up in your fantasy league. Uh, <laughs> it's not going to work. Because, you know, Gronk is, Gronk is still 1A and 1B and 1C. You know, so, uh, yeah, don't don't pick him up. But it'll be good for the Patriots uh, going forward. Um, you know, they definitely like to use some double tight ends. Uh, man, they got weapons on the field, man. It's not fair. <laughs> it is. It's not at all. And uh, Greg O in the chat room, he's a resident Patriots fan. I know he's excited about it. Um, I'm sure he's going to be posting a whole lot more about Martellus Bennett coming back. Uh, but, yeah, that that uh-huh. that was a very interesting story from this week. Uh, I want to thank you, as always, for coming on. As always, awesome. coming on, talking to weekend sports. Once again, Ty, I'm Mac. Thank you again. Thank you, man, for having me on. You know, I, I enjoy this every week. Uh, let's do it again. Uh, I got to give a shout out to my, my Warriors right now. We we finally hitting our groove, I think. So <laughs> I think we're about to pull off one of them 20. Huh? <laughs> y'all, y'all was never out of groove anyway. Y'all can't be out of groove. I mean, you, too many players. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this, you, you know, at the beginning of the season, we started off and we lost like three games at the beginning of the season, you know, and now we're, you know, we're on a five game winning streak. But I, I think we're about to go streaking. I think we're going to probably, you know, run off at least, you know, I, I'm saying 15 wins, you know, and uh, and get back on that pace. So, you know, uh, we, we got to start that dominance again. Our offense is, you know, offense is already clicking, but the defense is starting to finally get there and show up now. So once that happens, it's over. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Everybody be on the lookout because the uh, Dubs about to go on a run. Uh, find time Mac on Facebook, T-Y-J-U-N, Mac. And uh, have a good one. We'll be back doing this again in a couple of weeks. All right. Have a good one, man. Bye. All right. Take care. All right. That was Tyon Mack. Always love to have him on every single week. Uh, Grego says 87 and 88 both on the field will be great. It's going to be. Uh, it's definitely going to be. All right. So it's time to get into the college football talk. Uh, talk with Larry B earlier this today. Uh, he wasn't able to come on live, but we got some college football talk. We got Georgia versus Auburn. We got Notre Dame versus Miami. We got TCU versus Oklahoma. We'll get into it right now. Stay tuned. All right. You already know what time it is. College football which means we got Larry B. of IE Sports Radio on the line. Love talking college football, love talking sports, period. 
Uh, great to have you on. I know you got a game today as well. 